Hey, I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to day seven of my 31 day jazz piano for beginners workout challenge. And let's talk today about non-functional and functional harmony. No, don't run away, please, no. <laughs> the reason I said that, we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but in a way that's very doable. Um, I, I, this, this teenager came to me for a lesson once. This is before I, st I started teaching online in 2012. This is way before that, uh, maybe, I don't know, 1995. So I was playing a lot of Broadway shows and a friend of mine out in Connecticut had a teenage pianist in his high school band. My friend was a teacher and he, um, the, the, the kid needed some direction, you know, and, and took the train into Manhattan to take a lesson with me. And he showed up, I said, so what's the, what, you know, what, what do you want to learn? What, what's going on? And he said something that surprised me, but I'm seeing it now a lot, which is why it's relevant. He said that he had a whole shelf full of piano books on jazz, harmony, you know, like, like 15 books. And all he would do is he would look at that shelf and he would just kind of freeze and he wouldn't practice anything. And I came up with a term for it. It's called practice paralysis, where you're just overwhelmed by what everybody's telling you you should do and what you have to do and what you need to do that you end up doing nothing at all. And it's, it's, it's rampant on the internet <laughs> these days, right? Like everywhere you go. So uh, I'm finding this, this a lot now. So what I do, I consider the cure for practice paralysis. And it's, it's how I learn. We're learning one chord, right? We're having fun with it, then we learn another chord. That brings us to non-functional and functional harmony. So uh, I don't like this distinction. I think all chords or harmony is functional in some way. It means it has a function, whether it's to be colorful or to move from one chord to heighten tension, to give variety, whatever it is. But in general music, functional harmony tends to be harmony that moves around the circle of fourths, and then you arrive at the five chord at some point, which is called the dominant, and then it pushes you back to one. So for instance, the five chord in the key of C would be one, two, three, four, five, G. So a G dominant seventh has this tension in this tritone interval. This is, between the B and the F. See? It's unsteady. It needs to resolve to that, which happens to be a C chord. Or... I heard that in Mozart's day, his kids liked to play a prank on him. And when, he, when he was upstairs in his bedroom trying to go to sleep, they would go to the piano and they'd go downstairs and they'd go something like this. Or they would go. They probably didn't play that. It wasn't... But they, I think it was a scale. They would go. And then they would just leave. <laughs> he'd be lying in bed saying, resolve it, resolve it. And he'd run downstairs and go. And then he could go back to sleep. It was a scale, now that I remember the story. There's a lot of letters written about Mozart. He wrote a lot of letters, so we know a lot about his life. So that's functional harmony. Like if you played a D minor chord, that's not pushing us back to C. That's not, that's, that's not in terms of uh, uh, this dominant tonic relationship that's so important. So if you just play G7 and then you go to C, you'll hear this uh, uh, pushing us back. So C represents home in this case, in the key of C. It's home played, it's the tonic, it's the hearth, it's sitting around the fireplace on a cold night drinking a cup of hot chocolate or something and it just feels like we're here even if we put on a major seven or any other notes nowhere to go just to bask in comfort and a safe warm feeling that's home but then we start going to other places so we could go to e minor not necessarily pushing us back home yet so that might be called non-functional then we could go down to d minor in jazz harmonic progressions, chord progressions, uh, the chords can go wherever the composer wants to, them to go, you or I. There's no rules, but there are some principles, and that's the important thing here. So eventually, in a lot of jazz, particularly uh, traditional standard tunes, eventually after a little while, or maybe sooner, maybe, maybe later, we'll get to a G7 chord. And that will often go right back to C. 
So it's this sort of journey around these different harmonic colors, and we go a little here, we go a little there, maybe it gets a little minor, maybe it brightens up, maybe it gets a little more mysterious, but then we get to a G7 chord and we come home. So let's improvise now, just using the G7. We're gonna do it in root position. If you know inversions already, you can play it in an inversion and keep it around where C is. But that's, um, that's not necessarily the beginning stage. Let me set this for 20 minutes. And we're gonna jam on this for 20 minutes. Really get to know this 5-1 relationship and then explore some other chord progressions. So we're gonna play G7, G, B, D, F, natural dominant seventh chord, and then we're going to go back to C major seven. Let's just jam on these chords, just in, in your left hand. C, one, two, three, four. See, we're getting pretty good at comping already, that's why I'm doing this too. sitting in front of the fireplace, just chilling out and relaxing, chillaxing. Okay, so now let's, let's, uh, let's jam on that a little bit. So we're gonna play, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna start at home, C major seven, then go to G seven, then back to C. And we can improvise, we'll improvise together. We'll both do it in the, left, in the right hand. One, two, a one, two, three, four. chord progression, just 1-5-1, one, one, is often used in a lot of um, calypsos, for instance. From It's folk music, or originally was folk music, from uh, the Caribbean, Caribbean. and um, uh, Sonny Rollins is famous for playing a lot of calypsos, but you'll hear elements of it in other music, even occasionally Keith Jarrett kind of thing. So basically, I'm going to keep this rhythm, and we're going to play the same thing, C, G, C, with, you can improvise in the right hand. Um, here we go. One, two, a one, two, C, and. Like steel drums.
So we can hold nodes. Remember we talked about the Eclipso the other day. There's like, you know, Brazil, uh, like a um, uh, uh, steel drum player just going bum, 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 right? It's rhythmic, it's fun. Um, and um, yes, uh, something we touched on the other day too is that even though these are all the white notes, this is the C scale, when we're on a C chord, those notes will be centers of gravity. We don't have to overthink it, but your intuition will be sensitive to that. If you hit a note that you don't like, you just move one up or down. And then we're, when we're on the G chord, those notes will be the centers of gravity a little more. So um, the one note they have in common is, well, the two notes really is G and B, but especially G, that's very consonant in both um, chords. The B pretty much is too. Let's just play this whole thing on a G and we'll hear how we can keep that one note going through. One, two, a C chord and G in the right hand. eventually is finding these notes that work within a few different chords okay let's um now let's add another chord before we get to G so we're gonna start at home on C and let's go to um, E minor 7 so we're gonna have C E minor 7 then we'll go to G and G becomes sort of that functional harmony thing where it, it pulls us back to uh, C I almost said pushes but now I'm gonna say pulls so we have E minor no, no, C, E minor, G, C, all with seventh chords. Let's just play those chords with our right hand. One, two, three, four. two notes. Let's start up here with C, A minor 7, it's A, C, E, G, and then down to G7 and then back to C. So we're starting home on C, going to A minor, then G at home. One, two, a C, here we go. track of you can do one hand or the other or you can just play like one note you can just play a G the whole time it's in all three chords one two a one two three four
Now for fun, in the right hand, let's just play the chord tones as our solo. One, two, you can play the left hand if you want. One, and, and hold the chords. One, two, three, four. You know, that might be a little fast. It was fun, but it's fast. Let's try it slower. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Some, uh, all music that we're talking about here, and even non-jazz, a lot of it, most of it, is a combination of chord tones and non-chord tones, right? I'm not, you know, there's other musics that don't do this in the same way, you know, maybe Indian classical music doesn't think of chords so much as scales or ragas, but um, in this type of Western music, it's this interplay between the melodies going this way and the harmonies going up, so it's like a, it's like a, um, jigsaw puzzle or a crossword puzzle. Um, <clears throat> and I realized a few years ago, a lot of music uh, that sounds very melodic is only chord tones. That's all chord tones except for that quick C in there. That. They're all chord tones. Amazing. I, I couldn't believe that when I first figured it out. That's 99% chord tones or whatever. So now we can, we can be aware of those chord tones, but we don't have to stay with them. We just know they're there as centers of gravity. One, <coughs> two, <coughs> a C major seven, go. gotten to the first page in so many uh, uh, method books, uh, something inside you is probably screaming out, two, five, one, right? That's the one I didn't do on purpose. So what we did was we went, uh, we started on the one chord, and then remember we went to E minor, which was three, we did like a three, five, one, E minor, G, then back to C. Three, five, one, and then the A is the six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so we went one, and then six, five, one. Because these Roman numerals teach us the relationship between these. We know what it sounds like when it goes from five to one, or one to three. You get used to that, you get familiar with it. But the one that's the most common in, um, in most jazz, in terms of uh, from uh, 
popular songs of the 20s through 50s, and then a lot of jazz tunes like John Coltrane, Giant Steps, is the, um, the 2 5 1. It's the sequence of the two chord, which is D minor in this case, to 5, G to 1. And these follow the circle of fourths. So if we have D, then we go up, counting D if we go up four notes, 1, 2, 3, 4 to G, and then it's. They're a perfect fourth apart in the bass. And so the circle of fourths has a forward motion. It sounds like it's going forward. Not all music needs to do that. But starting in around 1600, the Baroque era, functional harmony in this sense came into being big time. And I think we've gotten away from it in a good way sometimes too, because it can become a box. And that's why I didn't start here. I don't think it's good to start in a box, because then we tend to think of it as rules, or it just feels weird to do other things. I think it's good to just, you know, with some guidance, try different things, and then, you know, oh, well, this one out of all those options is the more common one. Okay? And then you're not thrown when you see another, another one. Like for instance, a lot of songs do go from uh, C to A minor, and that becomes a 1, 6, 2, 5, 1. So um, let's, um, let's just try this for a minute. Um, D minor 7, we'll just listen to it. D minor 7, and then G7, just move your hand, and then C major 7. We can start here too. We can start at home on C and then do that. Let's do it. Let's start at home, C major seven. Now we're gonna start the cycle. We're gonna go a little far away to D, but that's gonna lead us pretty inevitably to G, and then that's gonna pull us back to home. So we made this circle, not only of music theory, but of, um, of, of kind of a feeling. So we start at home, we go to D minor seven, and that's going to lead us to the G, back to home. That's why the 251 is so important to learn in jazz, just because it's used so much. If the 651 was used as much, that would be the one that everybody would learn. So um, we'll, we'll get to that a little more as we go along, but let's just start by um, just playing those chords in tempo. You can use either your right or left hand, or both. You can play in both hands. Just, move, just get used to it. Um, we're going to start, we'll start right on the two, on the D minor chord, D minor seven. A one, two, three, four. Now G. Now C. Starting on the two, the D. See? 
so we started out by talking about, yes, non-functional and functional harmony. And uh, it doesn't have to be dry, right? It's a living thing. It's in the music. And we can use it to understand the music and to experience it different, not just something that, oh boy, what is this talking about, right? Um, yeah, this is great. And we got to the 251, but we didn't just only do the 251 because music's more than a formula, even a popular common formula. So thanks for being here. This is great. We're, we're jamming, we're learning jazz the way I learn jazz, and uh, we're using the internet age to learn, but not <clears throat> to be overwhelmed and get practice paralysis. So um, congratulations for doing this for yourself. And I'm delighted that you're doing it with me. So thank you. And my playing is improving too. There's some links to click if you're interested. And uh, tomorrow we'll dive right into the 251 a little more and then keep exploring some different options. See you then.